Okay, so we are in agreement if you use the word normalize unironically and not in reference to anything in math or science, then the electric company is required to cut off the power to your house on Tuesdays. Aye, aye, aye. And so it becomes law. Now, moving right along, we need to discuss what is legally allowed when you're in line at airport security and somebody in front of you is taking an obnoxiously long time to put their shit on the conveyor belt that then goes through the x-ray machine as if they've never been to a fucking airport before, thus holding up everyone else behind them and increasing suicide rates across the globe. Uh, yes, I am proposing that if you take more than 37 seconds to put your shit on the conveyor belt, then anyone in line behind you can hit you in the balls with a wiffle ball bat. Very good. Oh, and if you do not have a wiffle ball bat, one will be provided for you. Of course. I have a limit of 52 seconds, but after that you can hit them in the balls with a frying pan. And if you do not have a pair, if you do not have a pair of balls, then one will be provided for you via a sex change operation. Excellent. And then how should we address the arguments that a sex change operation is way too much for something so minor? We say, yeah, it is, so it'd probably just be easier if you put your shit on the conveyor belt and fucking moved so we wouldn't have to deal with all that complicated shit. Perfect. Firm but fair. I would like to propose instead of the wiffle ball bat or frying pan option that if you take more than one minute to put your shit on the conveyor belt, then you give up your seat on the plane to someone who actually benefits society, and instead you ride with your luggage in the overhead bins. Mm, the out of sight, out of mind approach. Very good. I have a second proposal that after 47 seconds, if your shit is not on the conveyor belt, then your carry-on and personal items, instead of going through an x-ray machine, just go straight through a wood chipper. And if the airport does not have a wood chipper, one will be provided for them. My issue with the last two proposals is that they don't allow me to hit the person in the balls with a wiffle ball bat. And you really, I really want to hit the person in the balls with a wiffle ball bat. And everyone should get this right, as it will cure depression. So I'm going to move forward with all four options, but I'm going to add that in addition, if you take more than 76 seconds to put your shit on the conveyor belt, then for the rest of your life, you are required to pay first class pricing for every plane ticket, but you are required to sit in the last row in the middle seat between a morbidly obese couple that has a morbidly obese baby, which cries the entire time, but they don't do anything about it because they are sleeping and they are snores. All in favor? Aye. 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 And so it becomes law. Now, moving right along, we need to discuss what is legally allowed when you are boarding or deboarding a plane and somebody in front of you is taking an obnoxiously long time to put their shit in the overhead bin or take it down if you're deboarding and they're doing things like unzipping their backpack to find something or taking off their jacket when they should have done that a long time ago and they're not even getting in their seat to do so, thus holding everyone else up behind them and increasing suicide rates across the globe. Yes, uh, I am proposing that you are legally allowed to open the emergency exit and Spartan kick them out the fucking door and then throw all their luggage at them as they lie spasming on the ground. I would like to propose that if this occurs during onboarding, then the person legally cannot eat or drink during the entirety of the flight and they must wait until everyone is off the plane before they can deboard and also anyone behind them who is inconvenienced is allowed to hit them in the balls with a wiffle ball bat. I would like to propose that if this occurs during onboarding, then all of their personal items that they have with them are given away at random to people in line that were behind said person during onboarding. Ooh, I like that. Free shit. All in favor? Aye. 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 And so it becomes law. Now, moving right along, we need to discuss what is legally allowed when you have an aisle or middle seat during an early morning flight and the person in the window seat is keeping the window open the entire time with the sun right fucking there while you're clearly trying to sleep. Yes, what I am proposing is that if the person loves light so much, then you are legally allowed to take a metal flashlight, turn it on, and then bash their teeth in with it. And should you first be required to politely ask them to put the window down before you bash their teeth in? No. Oh, yeah. Due to the case of Marbury versus Common Sense, if it is obvious that you should be doing something, then I shouldn't have to ask, and I can skip right to bashing your teeth in with a flashlight. Of course. How could I forget? What if it's a kid? Tooth Fairy's coming early this year. All in favor? Aye. 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 And so it becomes law.
son of a... Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, here we have a high-definition photograph of this man standing in line at airport security with his shit on the ground. Here we have a second photograph of my client hitting him in the balls with a wiffle ball bat. But notice that his shit is still on the ground. Now, pay attention to the clock in the background and you'll notice over 37 seconds has gone by, meaning that no laws have been broken. Objection, your honor. The argument is that the damage done by the wiffle ball bat has prevented my client from ever having children. And if we look at the photos again, then imagine a miniature version of this running around. It is clear that this man not reproducing is the greatest gift that my client could give this world. And because of that, we are requesting a medal or trophy or lifetime supply of popcorn or something to thank him for his good deed. Objection, your honor, the defense has no proof that the world would be better off if my client cannot reproduce. Actually, by using artificial intelligence, neural networks, predictive algorithms, and other smart shit, we have created a 3D model of what this world will look like if this man is able to reproduce. Clear as day. Yes, unfortunately we are only one him away from everyone jumping off a fucking building to their deaths. But thanks to the efforts of my client, we no longer have to worry. I had no idea I was in the presence of such a hero. And because of this, I would like to grant the defense free air travel for life, along with a lifetime supply of popcorn. Thank you, Your Honor. As for the prosecution, I am putting your client on the no-fly list, the no-drive list, no drive list, the no-internet list, no-TV list, no-being-around-others list, no-fun list, no-breathing list, no-exposure-to-sunlight-or-fresh-air list, no-heaven list, and the no-reincarnation list. So, can I get in? Sorry, it says you're on the no heaven list. Come on, that doesn't expire or something? All you had to do was this. Well, I had my laptop and... Okay, but there's like your belt and shoes and all... There's a special place in hell for people like you. Where? Like the back left area? Oh, come on, that's like the hottest part. Yeah, enjoy. Alright, before you go through the gates of hell, please remove all jackets, belts, shoes, and hats. And for the love of God, hurry the fuck up. Oh, son of a...